Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today I've got a question for you. This is audience participation. I want you to tell me what, what constitutes wildlife photography and, and when is it no longer wild in terms of the wildlife photography? You're gonna help me out with it right after this. With a lot of these quick thoughts videos, I, I see something, it triggers me, and I start to wonder what are others thinking about this or how would others feel about it? I have my own personal opinions. What does everybody else think? And I saw an image, and I'll show it to you later, on social media, and somebody was, was uh, I think they were like selling a workshop, and I saw this and I thought, boy, that, that doesn't even, that doesn't feel like wildlife photography anymore. And I put a poll out and I said, in this image, I'll show you later, in this image, is it wildlife? I think like 80%, 90% of people said, I don't think that's wildlife. But a lot of people came back to me and started to rethink their position and said, well, maybe it is. So the way we're going to play this game today is I'm going to establish a continuum. It's going to go from one to 10. I'll tell you where the, where the bookends are. One means you've taken a wild animal in a wild environment and had zero presence, meaning really you're not physically even there. So there's no disruption to the environment. It's, it's truly no footprints left behind. You, you haven't touched a thing to do it. That's really, really hard to do. I'm not even sure it's possible unless you're transforming from another universe and capturing something. But anyway, that's, that's the, the, the number one on the scale. Number 10 on this scale is gonna be artificial intelligence. If anybody tells me that artificial intelligence is wildlife photography, we got big problems. But those are the bookends. So those are the real parameters. I think everything else is going to be a little gray. I think we are definitively sure that number one is absolutely wildlife photography and number 10 is not. Let's get into everything in the middle. And to do that, I'm just going to switch my screen over here. And I'll, I'll give you some examples as we go through. Just some eye candy. I was out in Utah recently. Uh, I'm laying on the side of a lake. Wild animal, wild environment. Uh, I love capturing animals that are that are doing things like natural behavior. So in this case, feeding, you can see the little insect over there. Thought this was really pretty. So in this case, there's some physical presence. In other words, I'm on the lake. He can see me. Um, hopefully I'm concealed a little bit. I think that's why I got a good look at this. I was pretty well concealed, but I'm still there and I'm still a presence. I made footprints in, I made footprints out. I laid there for a while. Other animals saw me. Most people are going to agree that this is still wildlife photography. I, I, don't, I don't really know how you don't agree with this. If you don't agree already, it's going to be a long uh, continuum for you because the rest of these are going to get even worse. But let's, let's go to number three now. So I think we're, we're pretty, probably pretty good on number three. Number, number three, this is a staged environment. Wild animal, wild environment. It's, I'm out in the woods. But in this case, I've manipulated the physical environment a little bit. I've done did this a while ago. I don't have a whole lot of images like this anymore uh, because I really don't do these this staging and a lot of grooming in the areas. I like to just kind of occur, allow them to occur naturally. Um, but in this case, there was a lot of these sticks on the ground with pine cones. Set up a bunch of them with a friend. Let's see what happens. I got a really cool image out of it. Now I, I didn't manipulate the bird at all. So let's just for the sake of argument, this bird is unmanipulated. It is just doing wild stuff. The only thing I manipulated was a little bit of the wild physical environment. Is this still wildlife photography? I'm still a yes, by the way. I'm going to get gray in a little bit and, and figure out what you guys need to know down in the comments. Are you still with me? Let's go to number four. Number four, completely wild environment. Everything is wild. The bird is, is wild. The environment is wild. Is it wildlife photography if that bird was drawn in is it wildlife photography if i shoot mammals and i use a scent trail i'm not going to get into i don't I hate to use the word baiting because as soon as you say baiting people go crazy this is not an ethics discussion you got to put your ethics aside and just decide is it wildlife photography is it still photography so in this case uh, in during fall migrations i will occasionally use these sounds uh, i wouldn't really call it callback because i don't know what's there these are just migrating birds. Anything random could be coming through. But I will use sounds as a way to try to attract them. So not call back in a way that I'm trying to elicit a specific response from a specific bird. Uh, and, and for bird photographers, call back is the use of, of bird songs to bring birds to you. Um, but just kind of random generic stuff. Now that's used here. I, mean, I don't want to give away all my trade secrets, but, but I use that here. 
And I do that to just kind of draw this bird in a little closer, maybe be a little bit more curious. You can see totally relaxed, wings are down. I feel really good ethically about this image and, and all of the images that I post of songbirds. But is it still wildlife photography? Because now I've, I've introduced a little bit of manipulation. You know, the first time I was manipulating the environment, that staging, this time I'm, I'm actually manipulating the behavior just a little bit. Is it still wildlife photography? I think this is a good one. I think I, I think I may actually lose a couple people here. I think most people are still going to be with me. All right, here's number number five. Now I've got a staged area. So not just out in the wild manipulating it. And the best example for this, think of backyard bird feeders. The birds are still wild, right? The, these aren't tame. They're not captive. They're not in cages. We're not releasing them for the photo. Wild bird can come and go as it pleases. It, this these cat birds nest around my property but I wanted to have fun I took a bunch of native plants from around my property and I made a little setup in the background and and this is what I got out of it now the bird is wild the environment is starting to get a little not wild much more staged uh, maybe consider this environment domestic right it's really not wild anymore uh these cat there's no way these this plant cluster would occur in the in the wild environment this cat bird probably wouldn't be hanging out in plants like this so it's really kind of staged uh are, are you with me are you with me on this one this is number five so we're going to call this wild animal staged environment maybe even domestic staged environment are you still with me let's get to number six well this looks pretty wild scott this is a picture I took a long time ago. Uh, these foxes were being hand fed. Now, I'm going to categorize this fox as habituated. A, I want to distinguish. We've done wild. We're getting out of the wild. We, we are no longer dealing with animals that I would consider completely wild. This fox is technically wild. It lives in the it, it, it lives in the wild. It doesn't it's not domesticated. I will call this habituated, meaning people were feeding these foxes. And this is, I took this years ago. Gosh, this is almost 10 years ago. Um, and what it meant is that fox was very comfortable around people. People were hand feeding them and they would basically just walk up to you looking for meals. And so um, because of that, there was no fear on the part of this fox about me being there or anyone else. So fox came over to get a drink of water, a wild fox probably isn't going to let you lay down, you know, 10, 20 feet away and start taking pictures, but this one did. So habituated animal, wild environment. This is number six on the scale. Number six. Number seven. This, by the way, I did not put the person's name on here because I didn't want to uh, call them out publicly. I, I don't know that there's anything unethical about this. I didn't want them to think that was the point of it. From a copyright standpoint, this is public domain. I grabbed it out of public domain. If you want credit for this, please reach out and contact me. I will happily credit you for this image uh, down below. This image is the one I put the poll question out. And he, here's where it gets really tricky. When I saw this, I thought, this isn't wildlife photography anymore. So number seven, we're going to call these habituated animals, okay? These hummingbirds are... I'm gonna, I mean, they're, they're coming to the feeder every day. They're programmed. They're probably not even feeding on wild food anymore. I don't know. I'm calling them habituated and highly staged. So they're not, we're, we're taking pictures that are not in their native environments. They're not in their natural environments. The behavior of the animals is a little manipulated here. Again, not calling out the ethics of this. Just calling out, is it wildlife photography? The majority of Instagram said no. However, I had a lot of people say, you know, knee-jerk reaction was no. So this is this is where I want I really want your opinion on number seven. Knee-jerk reaction was this is not wildlife photography. But then people came back and said, well, ho hold on. They're wild. They're not captive. It's wildlife. It's a wild animal. It's wildlife. So is this one wildlife photography? If you took this image. Would you allow this to be placed in a wildlife? If you ran the uh, competition, would you allow this to be placed in a wildlife photography competition that you hosted with this image? That's a tricky one, man. Think about this one. We're at number seven. 
is this wildlife photography. We're going to call this habituated animal, highly staged environment. Now, number eight, I don't have. I don't have number eight uh, as an example. Number eight, captive animal, captive animal, wild environment. This is a tough one to conceptualize, but here's what I mean by captive animal. Um, game farm in a natural setting. So I own 50 acres, but I'm going to open the cages and let them out. Now, if you guys know me, number seven is a tricky one for me. Number eight for me is a hard no. If they're captive animals, I did a video on captive life photography. If it's captive, if it's domesticated, to me, it's a pet. It doesn't count. It's not wildlife photography anymore. I have had people argue that wildlife, as long as it's not a domestic animal, a dog, a cat, a sheep, a cow, if this creature was in the wild, <laughs> in its natural environments, if it's captive and we photograph it, it's still wildlife. Again, I you see my, my opinion here. What's your opinion on number eight? Number eight, captive animal. We're going to call it wild environment because they're allowed to roam out and, and do what they do. But it is going to, at the end of the day, it's coming back to its cage. All right. Or it's enclosed in, in acreages. And then let's get to number nine. Number nine, not much different than a zoo. So I'm just going to call it zoo photography. Uh, zoo photography could also be a captive animal in a staged area. So an enclosed area, highly manipulated, trained animal, putting on performances, um, or slash zoo. So zoo environment to me, kind of the same thing. But they're not domestic animals. So these are monkeys, lions, elephants, giraffes, whatever you want. But they're in a zoo. Is it still wildlife photography? And again, it's not about disclosure. It's just about, is it, if you ran the photo contest, if you ran the wildlife contest, would you allow zoo photography? And the last one is artificial intelligence. Uh, I, I may have some funny examples of this to share. Uh, one of my friends, Vince, over on Instagram has been putting out some videos that, that I personally thought were, were kind of funny. He's, he's a pretty clever guy. Some of the images are, are pretty crazy. Let me see if I can pop one up here for you. Because so, some of the images are just really wild that he's been doing. Um, Oh, I got to go over to the other screen. Let me pop over to this other screen real quick and show you what this one looks like. This is a, <laughs> oh, it's a black snowy owl. So, uh, yeah, I, I gotta, I'm sorry, Vince. I gotta say, this is not wildlife photography anymore. Sorry, man. That's, I got a video coming up on it. Artificial intelligence. A lot of people talking about it. Um, it's scary. It's scary. It's scary. And in, in not just photography. It's just scary how far it's come in its infancy, how far it's come over the last five years. Uh, we'll get to that another day. For this video, down in the comments, gotta let you know that scale one to seven, I'll refresh it over here on the side so you could see what, what the categories were. Where was your line? Where did you say, nope, I, I'm good up to six, I'm good up to seven. Maybe you stopped at three, I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. As always, I appreciate your support on these quick thought videos. I hope you continue to enjoy them. Uh, and let's continue to have inspiration in wildlife together.